Man, I got to say, the Xbox 360 scene is absolutely cooking right now. The modding scene is just going from strength to strength at the moment with some really interesting updates. It wasn't even like four weeks ago when I covered the 1.2 iteration of Grim Doomer's bad update, which allowed for the ability to execute unsigned code using a hypervisor exploit loaded from a USB key. Now, this was something that originally took about 15 or so minutes to run with a 30% success rate, but the 1.2 update to bad update significantly improved not only the success rate to about 85%, but more importantly, the exploit can trigger in less than 60 seconds in almost every single instance. And since then, Grim Doomer has come out himself and said that he is working on a soft mod for the Xbox 360. This, of course, is a massive announcement and one that a lot of people are excited about and eagerly awaiting, myself included. And you can be sure we'll be covering that on the channel when the time comes. And I think the majority of us were just assuming that the bad update exploit was pretty much taken as far as it could. But all that has changed in the last week with a brand new fork of bad update known as a bad avatar. And the way that this exploit works is very interesting. Gone is the need to use Rock Band Blitz. Instead, the exploit triggers from an Xbox Live avatar account that is automatically triggered when you turn on your Xbox 360 and allow the exploit to run at the avatar sign-in screen. This leverages the stage three bootloader from bad update 1.2. In other words, the exploit should trigger in pretty much less than a minute. And what makes this latest iteration of the bad update exploit so cool, it's probably about as close as you can get to a soft modded Xbox 360 exploit, but it's still very much the same hypervisor exploit from previously. And although the exploit needs to run every time you turn on the Xbox 360, because it runs its exploit at the sign-in screen, all you need to do is sit there and wait for maybe 30 seconds or so for the exploit to trigger. And once that's done like previously, you can run Z Unshackle, and then it can automatically load into Aurora. From here, you have a fully exploited Xbox 360, which will run for the lifetime of the system being powered on. So to demonstrate what I'm talking about, this is my Halo Special Edition Xbox 360. This is not modified in any way. It has the bad update exploit on the USB stick with the bad avatar patches applied to it. And we're going to go ahead and turn on the Xbox 360 here. And this is not going to be edited in any way, shape or form. You will see that once the system comes up, rather than me having to go in and run Rock Band Blitz, it's really just a matter of letting the system boot up, which does take a little bit of time. It's the Xbox 360, of course. Now we're just waiting for the boot up process to finish off here. As you can see now, we have a avatar on the left there called a bad avatar. And you can see that there's a kind of message box that pops up as well saying this is free software. If you paid for it, then you're basically getting ripped off. Now the bad avatar update is running in the background, so you don't actually need to do anything. And you'll notice that the lights on the Xbox 360 itself are flashing, which indicates that the exploit is currently triggering. And after a few seconds or so, it triggers the Z Unshackle and we've successfully exploited our Xbox 360. So as you can see, this is a much more streamlined process of exploiting your Xbox 360 than the Rock Band Blitz method, which is still very much viable. And ultimately, it's not really going to be any different than doing it this way, but this is very much the preferred option. And of course, if you modified your launch.ini file, you can boot directly into your favorite dashboard. And for me, I'm logged into Aurora here, which is really awesome. Now I have read some reports of some people saying that the bad avatar exploit is not reliable and they've since gone back to the Rock Band Blitz method using bad update 1.2. And in my experience, I was able to corroborate this at least initially when I first set this up on my Halo Special Edition Xbox 360, the exploit did not trigger at all. So it was just kind of stuck at the sign in screen here and nothing was actually happening. Even though lights were flashing on my Xbox 360, after a while I had realized that the exploit would never run and I tried it again a few times and it didn't run at all. So I was a little bit curious as to why this was the case. I double checked my files on my USB stick. I even tried another USB stick and still nothing happened. The solution for me 
And again, this is just for me. I'm not sure if this is something that is, you know, a bug or an issue that has been reported in a bad avatar is that I had six Xbox Live profiles on this hard drive. So what I did was I went in and I deleted four of them, which I never used anyway. And I've since been left with two profiles on the device. And now the exploit triggers every single time. It triggers 10 out of 10 times and it is 100% reliable, at least for me. I haven't had it fail once since I've deleted those, you know, those additional profiles. So food for thought, if you are having issues running the exploit yourself, then maybe what you wanna do is just delete some old profiles that you don't use. So for those people that want to try this out for themselves, I will leave a link to Shutterbug 2000's GitHub repository. This is the public beta 1.0. And there are some notes here that you probably want to read before you run the, or you, before you try the exploit for yourself. And the most important thing is that you need to be on system update 17559 and make sure that you don't do this from Xbox Live. You do it from a formatted USB stick. And there's just other kind of information that you should probably read before you run it itself. If you do install this without a prior USB stick that has bad update on it, you will have to get a entry point XCX file to launch into, which is usually going to be Z Unshackle or Free My Z. Usually these days, most people are using Z Unshackle like what I showed you in this particular video, but this is still very much in active development and it will get better. I think, you know, those people that are saying that they may not be getting the success rate of other people, I would expect to see that get resolved in a future update of this. And incidentally, Shutterbug2000 is a person that we've covered on the channel before. It was many, many years ago, but they also worked on the memory pit exploit for Nintendo DSi, which enabled every single Nintendo DSi to be exploited via the memory pit exploit, which was a really awesome thing. So it's great to see Shutterbug2000 doing exploits for the Xbox 360. And they always seem to find really easy streamlined ways to make these exploits available to the masses. So this is a really cool thing. I'm very excited about this. Obviously there's going to be a soft mod for Xbox 360, but that will be in the future for now. I personally think that the A Bad Avatar is absolutely the place to be, the, the right way to go, because it's just so easy to run on any Xbox 360 out there, from the earliest Xenon model to the latest Winchester models. It's very streamlined and very easy to do. And it just opens up the door for unsigned code, for game preservation, for emulation, for homebrew. It's a really awesome tool to have. So I definitely recommend you check it out. But that's going to do it for today's episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As mentioned, there'll be links to everything that you saw in the description below. And we will catch you guys in the next episode. Bye for now.